Hello and welcome to Cloud Tech 10 for the 5th of February 2018. I'm Mark and I'm going to tell you all the latest news about Microsoft Azure from the past week in 10 minutes or less. Azure Event Grid is now generally available. Event Grid enables applications and services to subscribe to events from Azure services or other applications. You can react to events using serverless offerings such as Azure Functions, Azure Logic Apps, or Azure Automation. Or you can create custom webhooks for third-party services or for your own applications. Let's follow through this example, which will use Azure Event Grid to monitor for the creation of a new virtual machine and use Azure Automation to send a message to Microsoft Teams. First, we'll open up our Azure Automation account. Go to the Run Book section and choose the Browse Gallery option. In here, we'll search for Azure Event Grid and select this item, Integrating Azure Automation with Event Grid. Click the Import button and we'll accept the suggested name of Watch VM Write and click OK. Once the import has completed, we'll go to Edit and then choose Publish. Next, we'll need to configure a webhook so that Azure Automation can talk to Microsoft Teams. In the team channel that we want to send a message to, we'll click here to get more options and then choose Connectors. Click the Incoming Webhook option and then Add. These defaults are fine, so we click Install. We'll give this webhook a name and then click Create. Once the webhook has been created, scroll down and copy the URL for the webhook. Now we add the webhook to our automation runbook. So from the Watch VM Write runbook we created earlier, choose Webhook. Click Create New Webhook and we'll give it a name and then copy the URL of the webhook. Make sure you do this now as this option is only ever displayed when the webhook is initially created. Then under Configure Parameters and Run Settings under Channel URL, paste in the URL of the webhook you created in Teams. We'll create an Event Grid subscription. So from our Automation account, scroll down to Event Grid and then click Create One. We'll call this Azure Automation and change the topic type to Azure Subscriptions. Uncheck the Subscribe to All Event Types button here and then from the list we'll clear everything and select only the resource write success option. The subscriber type should be webhook and the subscriber endpoint will be the URL of the Azure Automation webhook we just created. We need to add a prefix filter, which in this case will specify the exact resource group and type of resource we're going to monitor. We need to specify the Azure subscription ID and the resource group name where we're going to look for changes and the virtual machines provider as we're looking for virtual machine related events. Okay, so that's everything set up. Let's create a virtual machine. I'm not doing anything different here, just creating an Ubuntu 16.04 LTS based virtual machine as normal. The one thing I need to do for this to work is just to make sure that the virtual machine gets created in the resource group that we're monitoring. I'll just whiz through and accept the default values for everything and Azure is now in the process of creating the new virtual machine. I'll switch across to Microsoft Teams and we'll wait whilst the virtual machine is created. After a short while we'll see a new message arrive in my Teams channel and there it is. Notification that a new machine was created. You could have achieved this without Event Grid but to do so would have required writing code that polled for information on a regular basis to look for the creation of a new virtual machine. With Event Grid we're able to do that without having to poll and most of the setup required was easily achieved through the portal without writing code. As well as the general availability of the Event Grid service, new SDKs for Event Grid are now also available. Support is available for .NET, Go, Node, Python and Ruby. The Jenkins on Azure offering in the Azure Marketplace has been updated to make it even easier to get a Jenkins master up and running quickly, complete with Azure integration. The template now lets you choose an existing virtual network and subnet as well as being able to create new ones. This makes it easier to integrate with existing Azure deployments. The deployment includes support for Azure Managed Service Identity, so you don't need to concern yourself with the creation and management of a service principle. You can choose to enable cloud agents using either Azure Virtual Machines or Azure Container Instances. Once installation has completed, you'll also see that a number of Azure plugins are configured by default, including the your app service plugin, container agents plugin, container service plugin, credentials plugin, and virtual machine agents plugin. Virtual network service endpoints and firewalls for Azure storage are now generally available. Virtual network service endpoints allow administrators to create network rules that allow traffic only from selected virtual networks and subnets. This feature can be enabled when creating a new storage account or configured on existing storage accounts. First, the virtual network that you want to use needs to be enabled for service endpoints. From the virtual network, choose service endpoints, then add. You can choose the service to be enabled, in this case, Microsoft Storage, and the subnets to use. Click add, and then wait for this page to update. Now that we have enabled a service endpoint on the virtual network, we can go to the storage account and choose the firewalls and virtual networks option. By default, access from all networks is allowed. By changing this to selected networks, we can choose from networks we want to allow to access the storage account. We can either create a new virtual network from here or choose an existing one. If we choose an existing one, we'll see a list of available virtual networks to select from. We can then choose a subnet from that network. Once I click save, access to this storage account is now only possible from virtual machines and services on the subnet we've selected. The Azure Storage SDK for PHP, Python, and Ruby are now generally available. The storage SDKs are split into four packages for each of blob, table, queue, and file, which reduces the footprint of these libraries and allows developers to only use the packages they need for the type of storage they're working with. Each SDK is open source with source code available on GitHub. Ansible users can now have a much simpler experience when creating and running playbooks for Azure. First, Ansible is now included as part of the Azure Cloud Shell. So by simply starting a Cloud Shell instance, you already have the tools ready to deploy to Azure using Ansible. For example, I'll create a new file and paste in the contents of an Ansible playbook. This simple playbook will create an Azure resource group in the West Europe region. Once I've saved the file, I just type Ansible playbook 
and the name of my playbook file, and the playbook will be executed. If I run this command to list the names of all my resource groups, I'll see my new resource group in the list. As well as Cloud Shell support, the new Ansible extension for Visual Studio Code makes it easy for developers to create and test new playbooks. Here again, I have a simple playbook that will create another resource group in Azure. If I now want to run this playbook, I can do this right here from Visual Studio Code using Azure Cloud Shell integration. In Visual Studio Code's command palette, I choose the Run Ansible Playbook in Cloud Shell option. I'll confirm the name of the playbook that I want to use, and also confirm that I'm aware that the file will be uploaded to Azure Storage, which may incur a cost. A Cloud Shell instance is then started inside of Visual Studio Code, and my playbook is run. You can now export information from Azure Security Center to your security information and event management system using Azure Monitor and Event Hubs. To do this, first create a new Event Hub namespace by searching for Event Hubs in the Azure Marketplace, and then clicking Create. To quickly create a new Event Hub namespace, provide a name and choose Create to accept the defaults. Next, go to the Azure Activity Log. At the top, you'll see this Export link. Click that, and you'll get to the Export Activity Log Preview Blade. You can select the regions that you want to export data from, and choose to export to Azure Storage or Event Hubs. In this case, we're going to choose Event Hubs, and then we'll choose the Event Hub namespace we just created, and select the Event Hub Access Policy that we want to use. Once we click Save, the configuration takes effect immediately, and events from the Activity Log will now start to stream to Event Hubs. You'll see that a new Event Hub is created within the namespace, and within a short while, you'll see messages starting to appear there. You then configure the security information and event management system to collect the data from the Event Hub. For this scenario, IBM Q Radar and Splunk are supported, and plugins are available to help with this integration. In the case of Splunk, once the plugin for Azure Monitor has been installed, you provide details for a service principal, the Event Hub namespace, and a keyboard account where the access key for the Event Hub namespace is stored. You can then use Splunk to analyze the log data as required.